this is something like you know uh, for the post graduates about what to think about and what points to sort of make a checklist in your mind when you see a case of dnj ankylosis uh, can i have the next slide okay uh, nishant is it possible to change the yeah, background yeah each changing each changing each changing yeah 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 it was actually a presentation with a black background and yellow <laughs> yeah. anyway we can read in we can, transferring we the good. slides it uh, got anyway <laughs> we can read but we can yeah read. okay since i'll be reading it out i'll uh, zoom them ma'am ah uh, hey, that's okay you can leave it as it is i'll read it out so you need to know whether you're dealing with a child or an adult whether you got a unilateral or bilateral disease whether the ankylosis is complete or incomplete whether it is fibrous or bony and whether it has followed a trauma or an infection we have seen cases in the past where the ankylosis has been related to middle ear infections which were inadequately or improperly treated now in such a case the degree of fibrosis in the area of the tn ankylosis is bound to be much higher than in the classical case where the child falls on the point of a chin and there is an indirect injury to the condyle even important is to know whether the patient who is coming to you is being offered primary treatment or secondary meaning whether he has been operated elsewhere we often see cases which have been operated elsewhere and come back with the problem of a recurrent ankylosis or as i usually say residual ankylosis because in almost all these cases it is usually because of inadequate resection of the bony block now why you need to know whether it's primary or secondary is someone could have done an incomplete release and used a method for an interposition of arthroplasty which will not be available to you when you step down to do it and we have even operated on cases which have been operated twice before meaning the temporal area is used up the cost to control graft is not available then you have to think of other methods of putting in something there rather than leave it just as a gap arthroplasty with a chance for uh, recurrence of christmas so the other thing the last thing that you need to know here is whether you would like to do an interposition or a replacement almost always nowadays people don't do a gap arthroplasty except in a situation where all reconstructive options have been used up we had to do like that for a case who had been christ recurrent and we just concentrated on giving him a gap and uh, starting him in on in immediate uh, therapy i don't have any experience about replacement arthroplasty but i would like to add one or two points here which dr nitin had been talking about if i am not mistaken that pedicled conchal graft procedure is not only by dr mukund jagannathan i think it's also by dr nitin mukal am i right dr nitin hello uh, i used to do only superficial temporal fascia i i never used to do yeah, conchal it is yeah i i had started doing after uh, it was published and it was shown by dr mukund jagannath okay okay yeah the other but i i used to do superficial temporal fascia flap of all different varieties there is an article in my indian journal about uh-huh. different ways different methods of using superficial temporal fascia Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have read that article, so that's yes, why I yes, wanted. Yes. 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 The other thing is, there is one other Indian contribution which uh, I think came out of CMC Vellore, in which they transferred a pedicled sternoclavicular joint to do a orthogenous TM joint reconstruction. I think it was published by Prema Dhanraj and someone else. So that I think is also another contribution in TM joint surgery. uh now the second slide the next one yeah wait 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 go yeah. back go back yeah we we completed this yeah the second slide now when you step down to operate the things that you need to keep in mind are yeah scroll down yeah you are always worried about injury to the frontal branch of the facial nerve 
So the classical description of the incision is you start off superiorly and remain superior still as you go downwards and the chances of injury to the facial nerve, the frontal branch are minimized by that. But do also remember that excessive traction in trying to do a coronoidectomy through the same incision by retracting the anterior edge of the wound can also cause this. And it is quite possible in the post-op period you'll have a patient who is unable to shut his eyes. Uh, personally, I like to, at least in less severe cases where you don't have an absolute bony block, in which case it's very easy to, you know, start with superior oscill and come down and remain superior oscill. Sometimes the block is more medially placed when you see an axial CT scan. And the outside seems reasonably normal with the joint space. In such situations, I would intentionally try to dissect the frontal branch of the facial nerve to safeguard it. That's a personal choice, but remember that this nerve can be injured or it can suffer a traction neuropraxia. Bleeding is another problem in surgery. Almost always this bleeding is venous bleeding and it is consequent to the pterygoid venous plexus. And when you have bleeding in a TMJ and ankylosis, the best that you can do is first pack it and wait for 5-10 minutes. In almost all such situations where I face the problem of bleeding, I have had to wait for 10 minutes, then gently remove it and try to do bipolar cautery if there is a specific bleeding point, which is usually not very common. But the pressure itself, you know, it arrests it. So, we come to the point of whether we use a power drill or an osteotome. You could probably use either one if you are um, if you're competent enough. I personally prefer an osteotome and I would use only a power drill to finish off after I have cut the bone so that there are rounded edges. And using a power drill, you have to make sure that your wound edges are retracted well nicely Otherwise, uh, there is a possibility the soft tissues and secondarily the branches of the facial nerve may get caught in your birth. But my own preference is an osteotome. And I would always do the osteotomy first, the lower osteotomy, and then subsequently I would do the upper osteotomy to remove the bony block. The tendency when you do an osteotomy uh, type of uh, bony block resection, is always to uh, take it out like a wedge, which implies that you tend to take off more on the lateral surface than on the medial surface. And that is one cause for recurrence. My own way of doing it is I make sure that my cuts are parallel all throughout. And then the bony block that's removed has got a similar width on the superficial and the deep surface. That makes it sure that you're not going to have a deep recurrence, which is extremely difficult to treat the second time round. It is possible to have an auricular canal injury also. It happens. The cartilag cartilaginous part of the external meatus can be injured. You obviously just, if you can put sutures, you put sutures, but make sure you give him some antibiotic ear drops. Uh, the other thing is coronary and contralateral exploration. Now, in a unilat in this particular case, it's very obvious that the coronary needs to be removed. I would like uh, Dr. Mukal to comment at the end of this presentation as to where, how he decides that a contralateral coronary is also required in a unilateral disease. I'm not talking about bilateral. Next slide. You have to remember two or three things here. Like Dr. Mokal said, it is always simpler, easier, more effective to do distraction first and mouth release later on. Now, it's a very difficult job to convince a patient who has got near complete mouth closure that, look, we are going to distract you first and then we are going to do the mouth opening surgery. But given a choice, that's the best because you have a stable proximal unit against which the distraction may happen. And like you said, the proximal segment does not move. It stays put because it's fused. And all your movement goes in trying to push the mandible downward and forward. Regarding orthodontics, 
seemingly if you see a bilateral 3mj ankylosis it will appear as if the occlusion is normal because that occlusion is a compensated occlusion almost always these patients require some sort of orthodontics to not only finish off the results of your mouth opening surgery but also in preparation for any future orthognathic surgery if it's an adult right and these distractors are even though you can use intraoral distractors the extraoral distractors give you the help that it can be multi axial it's quite difficult to do intraoral multi axial distraction now one of the points regarding costochondral graft generally speaking when you put a costochondral graft the growth that occurs is growth by accretion of the cartilage cartilaginous portion since it's non vascularized you don't expect the bone to grow and the cartilage growth is unpredictable which is why uh, dr nitin said that if it so happens that the patient uh, demonstrates an elongation of the mandible on the operator side some amount of trimming of the cartilage in the scap may be required as revision surgery my own preference when i take the cart costo control graft i take it with a perichondrial cap at the end which sort of simulates what we said about putting a dermofat graft instead of putting a ct graft with a dermofat graft what we do is we harvest the length of cartilage along with the rib unit and beyond the cartilage that has been harvested there is a small flap of perichondrium which sort of acts like an interposition and remember you cannot make the cartilage cap long it, it has to be not more than a centimeter or so if it's much more than that it has a tendency to fracture at the costo control mm-hmm. junction and your purpose will be defeated now when you do a costo control graft is usually done in children because it has some growth potential if you do not bring the mandible down you have lost the purpose of doing a costo control graft the costo control graft is also to maintain the length of the mandible so now if you have a unilateral disease and the right side is completely shortened when you put a cc graft you make sure you pull the mandible down so as to match or over correct on the opposite side and fix the graft in that position now if you do this what happens is a posterior open bite develops means the anterior teeth meet but the molars on the diseased side will not meet so your question may be what happens to the gap the traditional way of handling that is a posterior bite block is designed which is why you need the help of the orthodontic guy and gradually over a period of time the size of the posterior bite block is decreased when the teeth erupt properly and an occlusion is achieved so when you remember that you do a cc graft you have to make sure that you utilize the entire potential of a cc graft instead of taking an arbitrary length and putting it just there in my hands quite a few times i require the submandibular incision not only if i am contemplating plate and screw fixation but sometimes it's difficult to insinuate it through the preauricular incision only taking care that the costo control junction does not fracture plate and screw is the best method of fixing these because the bone has got parallel fibers and the apt description that dr nitin gave that when you put the plate the plate acts like a washer good if you have a plate and screw fine if you do not have you can put k wires but then you have to make sure that there should be at least two k wires and they should not be parallel to each other that also is a reasonable compromise provided you do not have plate and screw so now the thing is can we go back a slide to the first slide first slide yeah can you see the distinction child adult in this particular case we were dealing with a child and i can stand corrected but then this child does not have any option other than a fiber optic bronchoscope you can't do a blind nasal in a child 
the second feasible option would be what dr nitin said meaning you do a nasopharyngeal airway hyperoxygenate the child and try to release it under local anesthesia and then complete your intubation retrograde intubation and uh, uh, a blind nasal is seldom available for children so that 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 also you know sort of gives you an idea if you have a checklist like this the moment you see the patient you could design an algorithm which will take care of all these points one point i wanted uh, dr nitin to uh, talk about also is if you can make a diagnosis that the patient has got a fibrous ankylosis instead of a bony which means it's incomplete complete for whatever reason because of intraarticular infection or some arthritic problem has he ever used distraction solely for achieving mouth opening i am not sure i have never done this no. but you have to you have to treat either a fibrous or a bony ankylosis same way okay no i i'm just uh, talking like you know there have been cases of submucous fibrosis where a distraction has been used to get achieve mouth opening i'm not talking about skeletal correction hmm. but would you use distraction in that sense for a fibrous ankylosis no you can you can use okay you can you have to treat it like a ankylosis right okay i'm done i i hope uh, about i i just want to make few comments yeah about about your technique you are absolutely right i follow the same technique i do the inferior osteotomy first then i try to remain as parallel as possible the deeper part of the osteot uh, of the bony burring is done with the help of a round burr slowly and steadily so that you can get a good amount of mouth opening then about the coronarectomy i do a coronarectomy on the same side i haven't got any opportunity to go on the opposite side because with the single ost- uh, after removing a good amount of a bony block i was in position to remove uh, give a good mouth opening yeah so uh, opposite side coronarectomy coronarectomy i never done uh, rest all you have covered most of the points rikant about uh, taking care of all the nerves and vessels and other things i do take a submandibular incision at the angle so that you can place the graft very nicely in a vertical and oblique position yes. uh, putting it taking a, a make a hole at the angle and keeping a wire as a as a yes, pull yes, to give, yes. give the pull to your mandible to create the adequate vertical height and bringing the mandible in downward and forward direction will give you the access for uh, uh, placing your graft in proper position yeah and uh, we have covered most of the points rikant i think so yes yes sir any other questions nishad uh, Sir, uh, while harvesting costochondral graft, sir, which rib is preferred, sir? There is there is no hard and fast rule. Uh, whatever whatever closer to your inframammary fold incision. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, he told uh, uh, opposite side. If we are doing the bilateral, uh, we have to open the both the sides. Both the and, sides. Uh, both the sides. The, uh, Okay. both the sides and and swipe the left one goes to the right right one goes to the left the left okay yeah. mm. because the shape is very important yeah. shape and the curvature is important yes yes yes, yes. Right. okay we have to take the uh, total length up to so that it uh, um, come near to the lower border of the yes uh, yes ramus yes. and uh, we will yes. fix there with the plate and screws yes okay. yes yes yes, yes. okay sir so is there any questions in the chat box other sir uh, almost 45 members uh, joined uh, this uh, uh, session now all these so people should write they... down now all the points they should write down so that they will be ah, re- yeah. prepared for the exam presentation actually uh, this will be is a record archived in uh, youtube also sir okay. and uh, Yes. Any questions in chat box, Nishant? One second, ma'am. 
ఫుడ్ so better to go for distraction and followed by the release of the yes 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 that is the way it should be okay 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 so should we close thanks a lot sir hey.